Hello, I am Professor Dreadlock. I am friends with Just the Robot. I share this channel with him, but will rarely be uploading videos. When in high school, my teachers conversed thoroughly about World War II, putting an especially heavy emphasis on Germany's war crimes. When people hear the word Germany, very often, stereotypes of angry Germanic folk speaking in a language that sounds perpetually hostile are conjured in their minds. So, you would extrapolate that any country, any country at all during that time that habitually committed ethnic cleansing, human experimentation on captured civilians, forced population migration, and a plethora of other war crimes would have to deal with that tarnishing their image for generations to come. As you can imagine, all of those war crimes I just mentioned were not in reference to Nazi Germany, but of an entirely different country. They were, instead, references to the actions of Imperial Japan. Now, I can already feel a lot of hate brewing up towards me in the comments. I understand that a lot of people really enjoy <coughs> weeaboos. I understand that a lot of people really enjoy the artwork shows and video games created by the Japanese people and their culture. This video is not me telling you that you have to or even should dislike any of those things. Rather, instead, I want to talk about how these past events affect Japanese culture today, and to perhaps a greater extent the culture of all of Eastern Asia as a whole. While it can be argued that these war crimes were not of the same magnitude of the Nazis, the hypernationalist and racialist sentiments that fueled or at least kindled them are grimly similar, and I truly hate the double standard that exists between how people view German and Japanese culture as a result. Despite the fact that Germany's government acknowledged their war crimes, took steps to make some amends for what happened in the past, and taught widely about them, it is habitual, even comically so, for many to view Germans through the lens of their past rather than the present. All of the online memes aside, and you know what I'm talking about, internet. I even remember a few times in real life where I witnessed this myself. I travel a lot, and a few times when I went camping, at least a few of our counselors were German. Almost every time they were asked where they were from, someone would make a joke or immediately ask what they thought about the Nazis. Of course it's natural to be curious, but every single time people would bring it up. You would think that that's something people wouldn't want to be reminded of whenever they leave their home country. I can only imagine what someone must think, where any time they meet any foreigner, that's the first thing that comes to their mind. I understand to some degree why this is. What happened in Europe, to us as Westerners, hits closer to home. Many people fled to North America and Britain because of the events happening. There were many Jewish communities that were forced to migrate or die, and many of them chose to migrate to other parts of the Western world. It's closer to heart if you live in the West at least. Despite the millions of civilians Imperial Japan massacred, we will remember their actions against the Anglosphere the most. We remember Pearl Harbor much more strongly than Nanking, for example, because that happens to quote-unquote us, or at least people like us culturally. I remember once in a class, a Holocaust survivor came to speak at our school and showed us the tattoo he had received in a German death camp an image still burned into my memory this day. I understand, however, to the people of China and Korea that the deep cultural scarring left from the events of the war still linger, perhaps just as strongly, maybe even more so, also as the events of the European War did for us. During the beginnings of the Cold War, the US was much more focused on improving relations with Japan and using them as a bulwark against the rise of communism in mainland Asia than to prosecute or focus on war crimes. While the majority of Japanese people now have the knowledge of the actions of Imperial Japan's war crimes, there has been a stark contrast to Germany's general attitude of atoning for past events. Many examples of textbooks heavily downplaying or avoiding or ignoring those actions entirely exist in Japanese schools and in Japanese textbooks, and there is considerably less international pressure for this to change than there was for Germany. The Liberal Democratic Party, which should not be mistaken for the Democratic Party in the US, has been in governmental control, or at least had heavy influence on the country of Japan for a very long time. 
However, there have also been many, many, many instances where officials in the party have denied war crimes. There have also been many instances where the denying of war crimes has been simply ignored or not focused on greatly at all. I'm not telling you that you should abhor Japan or its people, but it infuriates me to see that people living in an age with easy access to information continue with these perceptions, especially today as many high-ranking politicians in the country of Japan refuse to acknowledge war crimes as recent as the widespread Korean sex slavery, when some of its victims are still alive to this day. All in all, I think if we increase awareness of the severity of what happened, enough people will voice their opinions about war crime denial, and maybe, just maybe, that there will be a shift in how the country handles those historic issues, and that such a shift in perception will help to decrease tensions in Asia and foster a new spirit of cooperation in the region. And no, I will not make a commentary on any of the so-called war crimes or so-called nerve gassing that the university has committed in the past. Good day. Now if you excuse me, I have a vacation to attend to an academic war doc. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we need the first part of introduction. Oh, right, right. Like, uh, oh, 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 I want to add more stuff at the end. Well, you said it's the, it's the introduction, so it isn't going to be in the beginning, all right? Now, excuse me, I need to go? Yeah, that, that's a great introduction, dumbass. It wasn't supposed to be an introduction, it was supposed to be a leave-off. What are you talking about, nigga? You said we're going to put this part at the beginning. No, I said that's, I'm going to put that part in. This part's coming in at the beginning. I'm leaving this in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Just record. Nigga, you need to leave grammar in your brain. Okay, hello, I am Professor Dreadlock. I am friends with Just the Robot. I share this channel with him, but will be rare, but will be rarely uploading videos. Unfortunately, That's he will be free. Okay. Hello, I am Professor Dreadlock. I am friends with Just the Robot. I share this channel with him, but will rarely be uploading videos. Unfortunately, he usually uploads videos. Alright. <laughs> okay, okay, please record that because you said the butt wrong. You said butt. Uh, but will rarely be. No, 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 you need to start over. But. Hello, I am Professor. No, 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 say it with enthusiasm, okay? And don't be. Don't record. Like hello, that. I am Professor Dreadlock. No, no, I was talking. So hello. Ah! Okay, come on, just record it. Hello, I am Professor. <laughs> 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 I'm trying. God damn it. <laughs> Me. Say it into the locker. Hell. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Two seconds. <sighs> okay. I don't know. Don't... <laughs> Hello. I am Professor Dreadlock. I am friends with Just the Robot. I share this channel with him, but will rarely be uploading videos. These nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be a pain to edit. <laughs>